Hey, horsey and gun people. I'll post this because a lot of my horse people have fireplaces. So this is a quadrifire fireplace. And I'll put the exact description of which model I have. But most of these fire inserts are the same. And so as you notice over here, I have a brush, which is an 8-inch brush because my pipes are 8-inch. And then I have these fiberglass rods. And I'm going to clean this and show you the difference of uh, what it looks like when you... Um, so I've swept this out as much as I could. There's a little bit of dust there, but you're going to see how much creosote comes out of there as I'm cleaning this. And first I need to take down the baffles and all that and I take pictures before I do it to make sure I put it back the same way because the, the board and the the, the anti-flammatory, I call it a blanket, the anti-flame blanket the has to pull out and it has to go on top of the board so you want to get it back in the right spot so you don't end up burning it up or messing it up. So I will videotape as I take it out piece by piece. So as you can tell, I've taken this one piece off. Now I have this cloth here and then this board. Unfortunately, it won't come off without taking off one of these. So I have to go get the screw. I forgot I had to take that off before. But just moving it a little bit, trying to take it out, what I try to do is stand this up and tilt it. Look at the dirt daubers that have fallen out that obviously are being built in the chimney and now it's fallen down on top of this because when I just tilted this, these things fell out. So after I take this piece off here, um, I'll be able to pull that down. Okay, so I took this one screw off and they came out like so that held this pipe in place, this baffle. And then if I just slide this out, it drops out. Remember the holes are down. And I can pull that out. And now this thing should come out. Oh, shit. I'm not going to be able to hold a camera and do this but that's what it's gonna look like. So I need to take this cloth out and this. I think I'm gonna go put a mask on because this is gonna get really dusty. I should probably have gloves on too. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. Um, got my little mask on, I'm gonna throw some gloves on. This is gonna be a Gets a little messy. Um, I could pay somebody. I think they charge one nine nine two hundred bucks to come do this. But I can buy the the fiberglass tubes and the brush that I have over there, and um, you know probably for under two hundred bucks, and I can do it myself. You know they say you're supposed to do this every six months. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I do mine once a year or once every two years. I only burn about a quart or so of wood. So, I try not to tear up my cloth here. And then, I'll move all these dirt daubers that have fell down from upstairs. Probably take this outside and try to clean this up. This board. And then this gives me access to the flute with the brush. Probably just move this to the side right now since I'm already videotaping. I 
I'll get this piece out of here. So, so far, I haven't even cleaned anything, and those are the dirt bobbers I got that I need to get rid of. So, let me fix this, and I'll be right back for the brushing. Okay, so, got that pretty cleaned out. Because I wanted you to see the crease, so this is, I did this, I think the year before. I might have done it last year, but I'm not sure. So, you just get one of these brushes. Uh-oh. Am I going to have to take out another? Yeah, so the flute's in the back. So, I'm going to have to take out, darn it. These things aren't that tight. They only need about a half turn and then I can do it with my finger. I didn't remember taking off all of these, but evidently I did. And these are a little tighter. So crap, I can't I've got to take off at least the second one of these. So let me get back. Okay, here we go. Got the three pipes out. The last one was a little tighter than the rest of them. So basically I'm taking this brush. I'm going to put it up the flute. And I'm just going to feed it in. And you're going to see star stuff start falling. And I usually go back and forth to scrub as I go up. extension rod of soot and I think I have four more extension rods to go so I will just connect this one to here And every once in a while, while I'm screwing to make sure this doesn't come undone, I twist the rod this way to tighten anything that I've loosened. sense in watching out with all this. I'll show you after I get all the rods in. I'm just going to repeat all this. Okay, so I've gone all the way to the top, up and down a couple times, and now I am pulling it out. And I'm done with the chain tool. And you can tell there's not a lot more falling out here. Which tells me it should be pretty clean. so I got to take some sections off here. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> so I'll get this out of the way now. And we'll pull out this last section, I'm thinking. And that is 
Chimney Sweep 101. This is a plastic brush. Somebody said metal brush is better. I heard metal makes grooves in the pipes. It's not as good. Half a dozen one or the other. When I paid a guy to come do it, he used a metal brush. I think this plastic one uh, appears to be getting quite a bit of uh, pipe cleaning there. So there is a lot of creosote that was on the pipe. Is that a lot? I don't know. Uh, you know, like I said, I do mine probably once every two years. Every other year I do it. And I burn about a cord to a cord and a half, maybe two cords on a cold winter. So, that is cleaning that up. Now I'll sweep all that out and put this thing back together. Okay, so I got rid of all the soot that came out, but I noticed one time when I was taking this off, there's a lot of dust and stuff that gathers around this top that you normally don't have access to. And although it doesn't seem like a lot, since you have all this taken apart anyway, it's a good time to give the whole, this is why I wear a mask, the whole interior a little sweeping to kind of get rid of the, uh, the stuff that just gathers up there. Now does this make a difference? I don't know. Uh, I just know there's a lot of soot and dust. And again, that's why I usually wear a mask here. get all this and then I'll give it a good final sweeping here so since I removed all the soot this is the stuff that you normally don't get out and again, I'm not real sure this makes a difference. Maybe this is just my little bit of anal cleaning. Since you're in here, I figure it can't hurt to go ahead and clean that up. And now, I will load this fireplace up as if I'm starting a fire after I put it back together. So next cold winter, all I gotta do is light it and I know it's good to go. Okay, so I put those two little uh, baffles in there like so. So two's in there. I got my, I cleaned the top of that. I laid it on here. Now I have to um, slide this back in like it was before. top all righty so that needs to be all the way to the back I have that this needs to go up in here like it was before but I need the baffle in first because this fits over the baffle like so once it's in there so I need to put this baffle back in here there's a little bitty uh, mark right here that this little thing goes in on each baffle and then you screw this, this is backwards. I screw this in once that's in there and that keeps the baffle. So I usually put that in before then I'll slide this in get it over here 
and then adjust my uh, screw. Get that screw started. Tighten it up. And I just, I mean, I really don't tighten it much at all. Then this will fit over that baffle. Like so. Well, these little things fell off. I'll just slide that back up there. And it is done. Now all I got to do is get my fire ready for the next burn. Okay, so now we're going to finish building my little fireplace. What I normally do, you shouldn't put metal racks in here and stuff. I've, I've got several videos on how to start my fire, but it's cleaned. It's ready to go. I put a couple of here. I put a piece of paper here because that will give some good heat. Um, sometimes I'll put two pieces of wood right here because the wind comes in right here and it blows it back and then I'll just uh, you know maybe shove one in there this is basically one paper bag that I get at the grocery store and then I will just uh, break all my kindling on top of this wood here when I trim trees, I put them in a pile out there, and then as they dry, I make that my uh, kindling. And if I want to stack it, I can. That's going to burn really quick. Really dried wood there. There's a big branch that I brought in. So I'll go ahead and break that down. I, I always bring in too much kindling. That's plenty, but because I brought it in, I end up breaking it off anyway. Uh, so, when I start this, I always leave some paper right here ready to start. And I usually just keep this little igniter here so I don't need matches. And then I just light the paper really quick and... Uh, it fires the fireplace right up. So I've got a couple of other medium sized logs on top of the little logs so when the little logs catch those with the other ones then I'll lay a couple of these flat pieces here a little semi piece of wood there I gotta break this sucker that's huge probably gonna end up cutting myself I'll throw that there I'll just throw that one there and that's basically it. My fire is ready to light next uh, next winter. Fireplace is clean. Everything's put back together. I'll put this in there. And then all summer that's going to dry and be really nice and dry when winter time comes. And then all I have to do is uh, hit it with that fire and I'm good to go. Alright, so that's cleaning the soot on your uh, fireplace. Chimney sweep. We'll end that there.